race fans, Chris Terrell here, bringing another DFS NASCAR preview video. This week, all three series are visiting Atlanta Motor Speedway. Before we get into the cheat sheets and the preview, let's take a look at where you can find my content each and every week. And it starts over at patreon.com slash Jagerbombs. For $5 a month, gets you access to one sport. For $10 a month, gets you access to all sports. Those are American prices. For Canadians, that is $7 a month per sport or $13.50 a month for access to all sports. There's currently seven sports going right now that I have sheets updated for. Uh, for NASCAR, I cover all three series. You can also get access to these sheets over at dfsr.com. That's dailyfantasysportsrankings.com. For $14.95 a month, you get access to our chat room, all of my cheat sheets for all the sports, as well as the basic stats for NBA, NHL, MLB, NFL, uh, and PGA. Uh, for $29.95 a month, you go up to the pro subscription. That also gets you access to our optimizers for PGA, NHL, NBA, MLB, and NFL. Currently nothing for NASCAR in terms of lineup optimizers, but that's something we're looking into for the future. With that, let's jump into this week. So first of all, we've got uh, the, the trucks in Xfinity race are coming to us on Saturday. We've got the FR8 auctions 200 at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. On Saturday, that's the Echo Park 250 Xfinity Series at 5 p.m. Eastern. And then on Sunday, we've got the Folds of Honor Quick Trick 500 at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, so we got lots of racing this weekend, lots of time to get things going here. So we're going to jump into the cheat sheet. We're going to talk about all three series. We're also going to talk about the track here a little bit as well. Atlanta Motor Speedway is a 1.54 mile intermediate quad oval, 24 degrees of banking in all four corners, um, very abrasive track uh very hard on tires have got long turns uh so that just that pretty much what that means is just the the back stretch and the front stretch are much shorter um so it is that really helps uh wear the tires down so this is one of the tracks that we really pay attention to tire wear so when you see pit stops and stuff like that almost all the time they're going to be taking four tires here this track was last repaved in 1997 so it's been a long time uh drivers love it fans love watching these races just because the cars at the the tires fall off really fast and the cars can get very loose out there. So it makes for some exciting races. This is also another track where we see, especially in the Cup Series, uh, more experienced drivers usually get the win and fill up that top five, top 10 finishing positions just because of the experience uh, with the track and the very and the abrasiveness that we talked about. So in 1997, not only was it repaved then, but it was re reconfigured to the quad oval setup. It used to be just a regular oval. There's talks that it may turn back to an oval um, in the future, but for now it is still a quad oval. So if you're looking at kind of a track comparison, not just a full out uh, intermediate track history, mile and a half tracks, um, Texas and Charlotte are similar with the quad oval setup there as well, if you want to look into that. So first of all, we'll jump over and we'll look at the truck series, the FR8 auctions 200. Um, got the sheet up here. We've got a Kyle Busch race, um, Ross Chastain. So we've got a couple cup drivers in this race, Ross Chastain, 13,000, Kyle Busch, 14,000. Um, so one, we get possible dominator out of Kyle Busch with that price tag. And two, we get Ross Chastain who could lead some laps as well, but most of all, he gives us, uh, elite place differential upside here, starting 40th in the field. And he's finished sixth at this, uh, truck race in back to back years, uh, top 10 in three straight appearances here. The 130 lap race, you're going to see that here. I'm going to have picks a little bit closer to the race. I'm going to put in some laps, lead projections, some fast laps. So anyone new with the matrix here, it's just a look at all the drivers, their starting positions, their salary. And then the points over here are your DraftKings points for every single possible finishing position for every single driver. So you can compare. Let's just say, for instance, Kyle Busch leads. We've got 130 laps. Let's just say he leads 85 laps, he gives us 40 fast laps. As you can see, that puts him and Ross Chastain almost identical points um, for the win. But Kyle Busch needs 85 uh, laps led and 40 fast laps to get to that 85 points for first place. Ross Chastain just needs first with no lap laps led or fast laps. Um, so overall, if Kyle doesn't lead the whole race, I think Ross Chastain's probably um, going to be the play here. Is a thousand less, and say let's just say he leads just 20 laps, gives us. 15 fast laps here that get puts him at almost 100 points his upside is much greater than kyle's kyle to have that same kind of upside let's just erase this here is going to have to lead let's just say he leads the whole entire race gives us 60 fast laps that's 105 so kyle needs to be completely dominant and that's don't put that out it's a truck race with kyle bush in it um, we've seen in the last truck race though that he was not uh, the complete dominator out there 
So fading him definitely could be an option here, and I would go to Chastain. So that's kind of the way I break down the top. Just seems a little bit safer with that place differential. Um, and if he gets fast laps, that just adds to the ultimate upside for him there as well. I'm not going to get into the, any other specific drivers here in this video. This is something I'll talk about in the chats uh, leading up to the race. You'll see my uh, picks will be posted here as well. In this preview video, I just kind of want to look at how uh, the drivers have done in the last few races. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to sort by average finish over the last two. So as you can see, Grant Enfinger, 9,000, starting 19th. He's finished first and third in his last two Atlanta races. That really stands out to me right off the bat. I like that a little bit better than Austin Hill, who's had some good track history here as well, but he's starting sixth, a little more risk there, and he's $2,000 more. Same story with Zane Smith. I think those two are going to be a little bit lower owned. I think we see Enfinger pretty high owned here, along with Chastain, and you could uh, you know start a lineup with those two and get uh, possible Dominator. Um, but most of all, you're going to get elite place differential. It's going to be a nice, safe way to go, I think. So if we just go look at intermediate track history, slide over here. This is from last year and this year. Drivers who are good here, Kyle Busch, obviously, uh, in six races, has three wins and five top fives. But Austin Hill, not too far behind him in terms of average finish at 5.8. He's finished nine of the last 13 intermediate races inside the top five, winning two of them. Uh, and 12 of 13 inside the top 10 is really, really consistent. Matt Crafton stands out here. Um, the upside may not be as good for Crafton starting third, but he's consistently inside that top 10, um, 10 out of 13 times, top fives in six out of 13. He's going to be very low owned, even with that $8,400 price tag, just because he's starting third this week. And then just looking at the current season here and how drivers have done, let's take a look at the winners first of all. Um, go by average finish is what I wanted to go by here. So Kyle Busch, one race, finished second. Um, but of the regulars here, we've got John Hunter Nemechek, two top fives and three top tens, um, as well as Ben Rhodes. They're both there with the uh, two top fives and three top tens so far this season. Uh, top five average finish for both of those guys. And then we're down to Parker Kligerman, only one race here. Um, started 40th, finished 8th, so that was nice for his place differential. But he started in 15th, so maybe not as much as upside for him, and he's a little bit more expensive here. Matt Crafton started in 3rd, had a pretty good start to the year. Uh, two top 10s. Sheldon Creed, same thing, two top 10s in three races. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I look at that. And then sliding over and look at the model this week, I've got 25% on qualifying. If we go back and look at the Atlanta um, last 10 races tab here and scroll down to the bottom. We've got correlation of 0.738 last year, 0.538 the year before. Four drivers uh, who finished top 10 started top five. Two more started top 10. So that's six out of the top 10 started top 10. Same with the race last year. We go back even further into 2018. We got a 693 correlation. Five of the top 10 started top 10. So we got a lot of correlation to starting at the front. And if we look at the guys starting at the front this year, um, we've got John Hunter Nemechek and Kyle Busch in those KBM trucks uh, starting up there. We've got Ben Rhodes, Matt Craft, and so we're going to see some place differential here, as you can see, kind of down in this next year. But I'm I'm kind of predicting that we see probably, let's just say five or four or five. Uh, I'll just go with five again. Uh, five drivers who start top ten are going to finish there. I think um, you know guys like if we cut, start scrolling down here, Austin Hill. Let's just sort this by price here again. Uh, so you can see at the top of the price, we've got Kyle Busch, Austin Hill, Zane Smith, Sheldon Creed, John Hunter Nemechek, Ben Rhodes, Matt Crafton, and Stuart Friesen started inside the top 10, um, and Todd Gilliland down here as well. I would even push it and say like six to seven guys um, are going to finish up there. And the couple that don't, I think maybe um, Ross, Chast Ross Chastain is going to be one of them that starts outside the top 10, Grant Infinger possibly. So those are two that I'm looking at starting outside the top 10 to get in there. So that's kind of the way I'm breaking down the truck race um, for this week. I'm going to go into it a little bit more and start highlighting these picks a little bit uh, later tonight, probably after NBA NHL lock, and then going into tomorrow morning as well. You can join me in chat, and I'll be talking about the drivers that I like and providing a core lineup um, in the chat there as well. Now let's jump over to the Xfinity Series. We've got the Echo Park 250. That's Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern, and it is a 200-lap race. Uh, at the top of the salary, we've got Noah Gregson, 11.5. Martin Trex Jr. is racing in this one. So he, you're going to notice he is down in the overall rank, and that's just because he doesn't have any Xfinity data here to go into the model. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking at, you know, sometimes when we see these cup drivers in Xfinity, 
uh, races or the truck races that we're going to see their rankings um, a little bit unrealistic just simply because there is no data and the model is just looking for track history, track type history, season data, last season data, and, and Truex has none of that. So um, over on the model here for Xfinity, I put odds a little bit higher just to factor in that he is the top guy projected to win this race although he doesn't have any data over here. So keep that in mind when you're building your lineups. You're gonna That's going to reflect when you see my picks on here. Obviously, Martin Trex Jr., a cup driver, top odds, um, starting 18th with place differential is going to be a very popular pick. It's going to help Noah Gregson start in 30th. Uh, there's another one. So you're going to be definitely stars and scrubs for this race, it looks like, because you're going to want one or both of these guys in your lineups, I think. Um, you know, and then you start looking down and we look at the Atlanta track history, last 10 races. We've got the guy starting first. He didn't lead any laps this last race. We had the, the lap leaders come from eighth, ninth and 30th, um, because Almendinger started at the back. He was able to get up front and lead some. We go to 2019 and we look at the lap leaders here. Christopher Bell starting third, dominated this race. Going back further, we've got Kevin Harvick dominated. Uh, we had quite a few cup drivers in this race in 2018. As you can see here, uh, Logano started second, but it was Harvick who dominated. So looking at some of these, we do see these cup drivers. I can definitely see Truex getting up front um, and leading some laps here. So I'm 100% on board with him as a dominator in this race. I think he's going to be very popular. But again, we've got Austin Sindrick, who has dominated at this track. Um, he's led some laps here. But he's just dominated this series. Um, he can dominate these races with that 22 car. I think um, it's going to be a tough. So right now, the, the lineup construction does look a little bit tougher because you've got elite place differential with these top guys. You've got a cup driver here who could be dominant. Um, cup drivers have been dominant here in these Xfinity races in the past. And then you've got Austin Sindrick starting at the front with a great chance to lead you know, half the laps in this race. So if we go over to the matrix here, I'm going to sort by price. Uh, let's just say Cindric leads 80, gives us 40 fast laps. We get Martin Truex Jr. with that place differential is able to get up front. And let's just say he only leads 60, gives us 30 fast laps. That's 140 of the 200. Let's just say Cindric gives us 100 and then 50. Truex leads. So if Truex leads more than like 50, 60 laps and Cindric leads 100 laps, um, I guess the way to put it would be if Cindric leads early, leads 100 laps, dominates, um, finishes top five that gives him 80 plus dk points Truex jr can get that same 80 without leading uh he can't get that same 80, so he's gonna have to lead some laps here let's give him 40 and 20 a win for Truex with 40 only gives him 81 whereas Cindric leading 100 would be six so kind of make your decision there that's how i use the matrix each and every week i need to look at this a little bit further before i give my picks out for this obviously but that's just kind of the way i go and do my calculations if you want to add this in or sort any of these columns on the main sheet like say for instance you wanted to go and sort by average finish here at atlanta and xfinity series over the last five races um you'd come over here and just click on anywhere in this column go up to data and sort from a to z for you to be able to do that and uh right now this sheet is view only for you to be able to do that what you need to do is go up to file click make a copy, name it whatever you'd like, leave it as copy of NASCAR Xfinity sheet and click OK. It's going to create another sheet and you're going to have edit ability on that sheet. Then you can go in and do all these edits. You can come into the fantasy matrix. You can start adding your projected lap sled and fast laps here as well. This is just going to show how many dominator points they get. Um, so if you want to go and do that, come and just enter that 100 laps. If you think he leads more, we'll go 120. Um, you know, just enter in whatever you want. And you can see these points change. We looked at correlation for the truck race. Let's go down here and look at correlation for the Xfinity race. We got 548 last year. Five drivers starting top five, finished top 10. So that was pretty big. Um, we had three drivers lead 20 plus, no drivers lead 100 plus, and one lead 50. Going to 2019, huge correlation start to finish. I believe this, oh no, this would have been um, Xfinity only this race so this is some nice this one is xfinity only drivers this race which is really nice to see so looking at this 2019 result where we had only xfinity drivers we had a very high correlation start to finish although we did have qualifying in that race keep that in mind eight drivers started uh top 10 finished top 10 four from top five four from six to tenth so keep that in mind but is, we keep going back here year after year atlanta with the high abrasive track with the tire wear um experienced drivers usually finish 
um, higher up than, than the less experienced ones because it is a tricky track uh, in terms of difficulty for the driver himself or herself. Uh, 705 in 2018, we had 756 in 2017. So very high correlation in terms of the mile and a half tracks versus other mile and a half tracks. So keep that in mind that we're not always just looking for that place differential. But again, it's going to make it a little bit difficult because we've got Martin Truex Jr. starting 18th, Noah Gregson starting 30th. Gregson's got great track history here. Truex doesn't, but both are top five cars um, this week. So keep that in mind when looking at the place differential. We've got Ryan Sieg starting 35th. He's consistently top 15 to 20 here at this track. He's 9400 so that price is getting up there a little bit. But we've got Brandon Jones starting 16th, Daniel Hemrick 11th. These are guys that we normally are seeing inside the top five, top 10. If we go look at season form, where they're starting versus their season form, um, Hemrick is starting outside three spots outside his average. Uh, Brandon Jones actually isn't, but he's got uh, th three top fives in uh, five races so far. So in those three races, his upside is much greater than that 16th starting position. Justin Haley, um, average run of 8.4. So he's been having, I guess you could say, a little bit of a tough luck start because of that average run of 8.4, but only an average finish of double that, which is pretty crazy in terms of uh, um, you know breaking that down. And so there's a lot of upside. He's probably going to be a little bit lower owned. And he's starting 13th, but he's got that top 10 upside most definitely. Um, so keep that in mind. It could be a GPP play there for him. Just looking at that data alone. Um, how he has ran, where he's finished versus how he's ran throughout the races. And, you know, some of those early finishes, um, you know, going to the garage early, those laps count in that average. So that average run on the track could actually be a little bit different. That's something I don't have calculated. So keep that in mind for Xfinity. Um, you know, high correlation from start to finish. So we're going to see probably, again, five, six drivers from the top 10 starting positions finish there. So you got to find those place differential plays that you think are going to uh, get up there and finish. There's only going to be two or three, I'm thinking, that start outside the top 10 that are going to finish there. And you got Gregson and Truex right there at the top, um, top two drivers. So you really got to pick and choose here. I think Brandon Jones definitely could be in there, Justin Haley. So that's kind of how you got to break it down here this week for the Xfinity Series. Moving on now to the Cup Series, the big event, the Folds of Honor, Quick Trip 500 on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern, 325 laps for this race. Before we get in here, let's just go and look at the season form. I'm going to sort by wins here. So we've got a lot of tabs at the bottom. I didn't really mention it, covering the last two. But for research, there is a lot of data here. You've got the main cheat sheet with all the data in the model. We've got the DK Fantasy Matrix, uh, which I explained uh, in the truck section there a little bit. If anyone's got questions and wants to learn more about the Matrix, hit me up. This is the DraftKings Fantasy Matrix. I'm in works of doing a FanDuel one as well. So uh, keep your eyes open for that in the near future. We've got track history, last 10, uh, with very detailed information here for research, with the correlations down here at the bottom as well, uh, where the drivers started from that finished top 10, how many drivers led 20, 50, and 100 plus laps led. A lot of research information there. Then we've got season form. So that's this season, all the drivers. We've got the same data that you're going to see on the main cheat sheet page. And then we just go into each and every single race if you want to break that down as well. And then... For each track type, so this week it's intermediates, we've got intermediate track type history over here if you want to break down how a driver has done on those. I'm going to be getting a little bit more detailed and breaking the tracks down a little bit more because all of these intermediate tracks are definitely not the same animal. Darlington being different, Atlanta being different, uh, both very abrasive. So we're going to want to look at that and break that. Uh, some of these tracks as well, uh, Texas um, has banking that is different in each end now. They're trying to make them a little bit different. Um, you know, like uh, 18 degrees on one end, 20 degrees on the other, 22 and 20. I forget exactly what that breakdown is. We'll talk about that when we get to Texas um, in upcoming races. But that's something I'm going to be looking at breaking down a little bit more as well. So going back to that correlation that we looked at for each and every race, last year's at Atlanta was a 798. That is as high as we're going to see at, a, at an intermediate. We see some creep into that 0.8 correlation range. Seven drivers started top 10, and all 10 came from the top 15 starting position. This was also a race that uh, was kind of set up with a random draw. I don't want to say random. There was a little bit. It wasn't completely random last year, but um, I'm just calling it. We'll call it the COVID qualifying. Um, so definitely had COVID qualifying for this one. Going back to 2019 when there was qualifying, 666, uh, sign of the devil there. 
um, but still high correlation from start to finish. Six drivers, top 10, seven from the top 15. So same thing with qualifying and without. We've seen a, you know, quite a bit more correlation when there was no qualifying last year. Back to 2018, 596, six drivers started top 10. So we're going to be looking for um, not only going to looking at the model here. I've got odds at 20, qualifying at 10, could probably have that a little bit higher. I'm going to do that right now. Track history, the last two, um, we've got 35% there, 25% on track type history and 5% on season. You can go and change that again. If you go make a copy of the sheet, feel free to go ahead and make change this model around whoever you want to see fit. I've got some um, patron customers for sure that go back and use old sheets, um, look at old races and see, you know, play around with the correlations for those and just kind of get um, you know, tweak their models a little bit. And I do it a little bit. I just kind of look at the data um, from most recent, but they're looking at a lot larger sample sizes and playing around with that model a ton and trying, you know, 10 to 20 different models to kind of hone in and see what's going to be more important. Um, mostly, I like the last two years because the package is going to be uh, fairly similar here at Atlanta. Um, things are going to change next year, obviously, with the next gen car. Um, so we're going to kind of want to throw a lot of this data out the window. So this season is going to be very important. Next season, it's like a whole reset on information for data people out there. There's going to be a lot more guessing, um, for next year. So this year is very important to look at that data. And that's why I've got all these research sheets down here next year. Things are going to change a little bit, but for now we've got all this research information. Um, I like looking at the last two years. So for the cup race here, let's go over and look at salary now. At the top, we've got Kevin Harvick, understandably so. He started in seventh. He has won two of the last three races here. He's got the best average finish over the last five races with inside the top five. He's been absolutely dominant, leading 196 laps over the last two races, 800 laps over the last five, and 1,212 over the last 10. So this has been a track where he's been just absolutely dominant. I've been talking about him a lot lately in my videos, um, mostly on Sundays during the live show. I've been fading Harvick. Um, if we go over just the matrix in general here with Kyle Busch starting 19th, he's been decent at this track too, as you can see. Um, second, sixth, seventh, 16th, uh, third. Uh, so top five consistently, and he started 19th. So this brings me automatically over to compare those two drivers in the fantasy matrix. We're going to sort by price here again. We're going to look at Kyle Busch leading no laps. He's got a upside of 63 starting 19th for the win. Harvick, um, I'm comparing this a lot to last year's race where we've seen multiple drivers. So Harvick was dominated 151. He started nine. He was a lot better on these mile and a half last year than he was this year. Um, let's just go look at Harvick here. Average finish. Okay. He's second. This was since the return last year. So just this season, we've got only two races to go by for Harvick, but he started first, finished 20th uh, for the DK was pretty bad there. Uh, five DK. Uh, didn't absolutely kill you on FanDuel. So when I'm talking these picks and fading some of these guys, it's mostly a DK play because that place differential hurts you a lot more when you're going backwards than it does on FanDuel. You're only losing a half point on FanDuel versus a full point on DraftKings. He started fourth at Homestead, finished fifth, but still that was only 40 fantasy points. So this week, if he does not, let's just say neither leads a lap, neither looks like a dominant car early in the season, neither leads a lap. Kyle Busch wins, he gets 63 points. Kevin Harvick wins, he gets 51. Let's say they both finish top five. That's 53. Uh, Kyle Busch is definitely who I'm looking at here. If Harvick wins and gets 51 fantasy points, Kyle only needs a sixth-place finish to match him there. I can see a sixth-place finish out of Kyle more than I can see a win out of Harvick. So just right now, just based off that alone, with none of them leading uh, any laps based on what we've seen already this year, I've got Kyle Busch as my as my play over Kevin Harvick here this week. Um, so that's the way I'm looking at that. Now, in terms of dominators, uh, I can see it multiple ways. So we haven't seen the guy in first. If we go look at those two races, it's so we had Kevin Harvick start on the pole. He finished 20th. He led zero laps. Uh, at Homestead, we had Denny Hamlin. He started first, finished 11th. He only led zero laps. Um, so if we go back and look, I, I had this data and I presented it in chat. I don't have it in front of me and I apologize for that. But going back and looking at since the start of the um, last year on the intermediate tracks, um, not looking at the Las Vegas race, which had practice and qualifying, but looking at just when they came back to Darlington and Homestead and had the two races at each track um, with the no qualifying and no practice. 
Only twice was a driver start from the pole and lead over 100 laps. Um, Hamlin did it once, and I want to say Truex was the other one. Um, so it only happened twice in now 15 races. So I, I love to play the numbers. So I love the price on Hamlin. I think because he's starting first, he's going to be very, very popular. But if he does not lead a bunch of laps, he's not going to make it there. So in turn, um, I like going to Kyle Larson here as my dominator. So that's kind of one way I'm looking at my dominators is picking someone maybe not starting on that front row. Um, I, I could see, see Hamlin or Truex doing it. These are cars that uh, have shown some dominance so far this season. If we go look at Truex and Hamlin here, laps led on these tracks this season 47 and 6 last race 37 Truex had at Homestead so they both led some laps on these tracks um so if we just go and say we'll give them each 50 but I think Larson has a chance to dominate here he has looked tremendous so far this season so I'm just going to give him 125 um we'll go 60 there we'll go 20 and 20 and that just kind of gives you um that's only 225 so I'm still 100 laps short here on my total but this is the kind of way I'm looking at it early on um, Joey Logano could lead some, so I'll throw his hat in the ring here as well. So as you can see, if Kyle Larson does end up being the dominator, he's going to be in the optimal lineup because he's going to have 100 plus points even inside the top five if he leads 125, even if he you know falls out of the the winning and he finishes third, fourth, or fifth at the end of the race, but still gets those dominator points. He's going to be in the in the lineup for sure, just based on um, this fantasy matrix right here, just showing you that uh, that dominator will be enough to give him. Um, value 5x is kind of what we're looking for so you know looking at 50 points so if he's an absolute dominator he is crushing his price at almost 10x um, with a five uh, inside the top five so i definitely like that so uh second dominator i think denny can probably lead some early on because like i said he has looked like um, a pretty good car early on in the season but the data shows us that the guy leading on the pole which is just based off of a fast um again i don't have the exact formula for the qualifying this year but it's based on a lot of stuff from last race the fastest lap from last race some track history um some season form and stuff like that it isn't the fastest car like we've seen in practice uh you know like i said last week if we see danny hamlin at practice he was fastest or top three in both practices uh qualified first or second i would definitely be on board as a dominator but the fact that this is more of a random draw and i know it is not a complete random draw it is a uh, model that they put together this year just we just haven't seen it. The guy starting on the pole, so probably going to fade him uh, and these laps led. Um, I do like Truex. He has shown some dominance this year, so I'll give him a hundred here and just see where things fall. So at that price tag in this sub 10k range, this group right in here is probably going to see a lot of ownership. The Hamlin, Elliott, Truex, Logano, and Blaney. Uh, Blaney could be the favorite here just because he started in tenth and gives us a little bit more place differential um, going back. But like I said. We see a lot of guys finishing top 10, starting top 10, top five even. Um, and a lot of these races, we're seeing like at least like eight of the top 10 coming from the top 15 starting positions. So Kyle Busch would be a little bit of an outlier there. He would be my one outlier that is going to finish top 10, top five, starting outside the top 10. But it's going to be pretty tight up here with this group of drivers because we've got seven drivers in the top you know, from the mid nine nine k range and up. If we even expand that out to nine k and up, that is nine of ten drivers from nine k and up that are starting top ten. So if we get seven or eight of those guys of those nine drivers going to finish top ten, um, you really have to figure out and nail down who your dominators are going to be, and then use this fantasy matrix to really figure out who is going to give you the most upside. So because you like Danny Hamlin and think he's going to finish third you know top three this week if he doesn't lead laps he's not going to be in the winning lineup if kyle larson leads laps and 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 gets a top five or if martin trex jr leads laps 100 laps and hamlin let's just say he only leads 50 what does that give us total here that puts us at our 325 rate right there hamlin leads 50 truex leads 100 um truex finishes fifth and gets 70 points to get hamlin doesn't have a shot at those 70 points with only 50 laps led. Let's give him 20 fast laps. He's not even getting that with the win. So Truex with 100 laps led finishing fifth gives you more points than Hamlin at 50 and a win. Um, 
So keep that in mind when you're figuring out these 325 laps that and where you think they're going to fall based on the research information that you're using from here. Um, like we normally see Harvick led 150 last year, but normally we see, okay, let's go look. We got four, four drivers led 20 plus, three 50 plus, one 100 plus, six 20 plus. So we're going to see six drivers and probably going to see them from those top 10 starting positions most likely lead 20 to 30 laps. We're going to see probably two to three drivers lead 50 laps. We're going to see probably just one driver lead 100 plus. So go into it. When you're looking at the fantasy matrix, break that down. So for me personally, I like Larson to be the outright dominator. There's 150 laps. So then we're going to have two lead 50 plus. So now I'm going to go, let's just say Trix. 50, Logano. Um, who else do I think could lead here? I think, let's say Blaney, 50, 20. Let's go 20 for fast laps there. So that gives us a total of 250. Um, and then we've got uh, three more drivers of 20 plus. Let's go 20 here. Let's go 20 there. Let's 50, 20. We're at 290. We need another 35 laps. Um, so let's just go 30, 30, and 15. I think that puts us right on 325. So that puts us on 325. So that's how I would break it down. We've got all the drivers starting inside the top 10 leading laps here. I've got my favorite with Larson. And now you can see kind of where the chips fall. Um, and usually in terms of fast laps, if you're looking to make a projection there, normally we're seeing between 40 and 60%. So if a driver leads 100 laps, he's going to he's gonna generally have between 40 and 60 fast laps in there as well. It's kind of how I calculate. And I don't need to get the number of fast laps I'd exactly identical. Um, Projected laps led is even a little bit off because we've got caution stage ends in there as well where those aren't calculated. But I generally like to put it up and get it to this 325 number just to get that dis distribution across there. And again, it all comes down to the research that we do down here at the bottom. This is where I get my drivers from. So I want one driver leading 100 plus in my projections. I want two to three leading 50 plus, And then I want like four or five leading 20 plus at this track. Every, every track is going to change and we're going to do this research each and every week. So stay tuned for that. All right. We've gone through all three series. Um, make sure to join Dane and I Sunday morning. We do our NASCAR live show. We're going to be talking our top picks um, for the cup race. We're going to be talking prize picks. We're going to be talking top bets in there as well. Some GPP pivots, some ownership projections. So we're going to give you all that information um, for the truck race and the Xfinity race. Make sure to join me in um, my Patreon Slack chat, as well as the DFSR chat. If you're looking to break down that race or have any questions whatsoever, my picks are gonna be posted on the sheet later today for the Xfinity and the truck race, as well as finalized tomorrow morning. And then the core uh, lineups that I provide with like three, three driver cores, four driver cores, usually two of those for GPP. I will provide those about an hour, hour and a half before the race for those as well. And again, to get my content, Head over to patreon.com slash Jaegerbombs. Five bucks a month American gets you one sport. Ten bucks a month gets you all sport. That's $7 Canadian or $13.50 for all sports. Or to dfsr.com. $14.95 a month gets you access to the chat, basic stats, as well as all of my cheat sheets. For $29.95 a month gets you all that, plus our optimizer for PGA, NHL, MLB, NBA, and I'm missing one here, NFL and MLB. Thanks a lot for watching the show. Make sure to like, subscribe, um, so you'll get notification when we go live on Sunday, as well as I'm going to have a lot more shows coming on. I'm going to be doing this preview every week uh, on Thursdays or Fridays. If you have that notification on, you're going to get notified um, via email or however you have it set up to get that information to you as fast as possible. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next week.